What's up guys, how are we doing today? I am bringing a little bit of a different video to you today. I'm in my backyard. The video that I'm filming over the next seven days is going to be a dopamine detox. Oh, yeah. might be saying, what is that? Travis, you're a style channel. Why are you talking about dopamine? And this video is actually inspired by this guy I follow on YouTube, Andrew Kirby. And he talks a lot about stoicism, self-development, self-care. His latest series has been all about a dopamine detox. Huge shout out to Andrew Kirby for inspiring to make this video. But basically, if you wanna know the science behind it and what it is, go check out Andrew's video because he can do a way better job of explaining it than I can. Can. In a nutshell, the way I understand it is essentially removing all of the distractions and removing all of the things in your life that distract you from getting things done, that distract you from achieving your goals, going after your goals, being productive. It's essentially detoxing you from your vices and also constant distractions. For example, scrolling through social media releases dopamine. Binge watching television releases dopamine. Gaming releases dopamine. And so these are all things that can be a vice and, and distract you from what you're really trying to do in life. You might be saying, Travis, you're a style channel. Why are you talking about this? I like to see it as a self-care channel. Style is self-care, grooming is self-care, and then developing yourself is also self-care. So that's one of the reasons I wanted to do this was so you could kind of follow me on my dopamine detox challenge. And I'll be doing it over the next seven days. So what does it look like for me, like specifically in my day to day? Normally when I wake up in the morning, I get my phone and I hop on Instagram and I'm scrolling and I stay in bed for an extra 20 minutes scrolling through social media. So cut that. Then I'll usually go to the bathroom and then have my phone and I'm scrolling again, you know, scrolling through Reddit or scrolling through TikTok or something distracting. So gone. Another vice that I rely on quite often is coffee. Every morning I wake up and I need to have a cup of coffee before I can do anything. So I'm going to be detoxing caffeine. Cut. Another thing I rely on constantly is at night I like to wind down with a glass of wine or two. So cutting out that for a while. It's cutting out things that you rely on or that you need to get you through the day. And then also things that constantly are a distraction because it releases so much dopamine into your brain that you seek it over and over and over again. So binge watching Netflix, gone. Gaming, gone. These are a lot of my vices that I'm going to be detoxing from. So when you take all of this away, the thing that's left is essentially you can either be alone with your thoughts or you can get to work on things that move the needle and goals that you've set. For me, it's growing YouTube. It's also, I have another YouTube channel that I'm working on that I'm not even the talent of. I'm just sort of the behind the scenes producer. I wanna grow that. Another goal that I have during this quarantine is to not fall back on my fitness. I really want to use this opportunity as a way to actually increase my fitness if possible. Instead of waking up and scrolling through Instagram and social media and being distracted, I'm, you know, get up and go for a run or get up and do a body weight workout or get up and do 100 push-ups. Like these are things that you can replace with the vices that you normally have. So having said all that, this is day one and what I've done today so far, I haven't had any coffee today. And keep in mind, when it comes to social media, a lot of social media is actually my job. I make money from affiliates. I make money from sponsors sometimes. I make money by posting on social media. So I can't completely cut it out because it's still part of my livelihood, but I can cut out the constant scrolling. And I'll be coming back day two, day three, day four, all the way to day seven, checking in with you guys, maybe a morning and a night one, letting you know how I feel, letting you know the things that I'm dealing with mentally. I will say that since I'm just starting, I haven't been able to give any sort of feedback on how hard it's gonna be or the struggles that I've dealt with yet. I will say saying no to getting on my phone in the morning wasn't that hard. I just kind of didn't check it. But what has been sort of hard is I've been looking at my coffee maker all morning wanting a cup of coffee. And so that has been a little bit of a struggle, but I'm cutting it out. I'm taking the detox. I'm going all in on this. So thank you, Andrew Kirby, for inspiring me. If you go check out his video, he actually has this Reddit community where you can go do a dopamine detox and you can find an accountability partner. I decided that I wanted to make all of you guys my accountability partner because if I'm putting this out on YouTube, I better do it. 
So that's kind of the mentality that I'm taking towards this is going all in and then documenting it so you can kind of follow the journey. I'll check back in a little later. Maybe I'll check back in on day two. I don't really know. There's no format for this. I don't know how I'm gonna do it. I just wanted to document it and let you guys know. So yeah, I'm gonna go work out. Peace. Okay, what's up guys? Coming back with a quick check-in. It's funny, as you sort of sit alone with your thoughts for a little bit, you tend to come up with some insights or like cool ideas, things like that. Oh, I also forgot to mention another sort of, I guess, vice that I'll be cutting out, which was sugar. Sweets and candy and cookies and brownies and cake. And luckily my birthday just passed, so I won't be getting any more sugar cake deliveries to my house. That's another thing that's a big one that I'm, I'm gonna be detoxing from. But what I've started to notice and kind of a thought that came through my, my head as I was folding laundry and you know getting ready to go for a run was that this is just like a really glorified way of building discipline. That's all it is. Discipline to do the hard things. That's all discipline is. And if you go again, watch Andrew's video about sort of the science behind a dopamine detox, it helps sort of trick your brain into enjoying doing hard things. Because the thing about discipline is that you got all this willpower and then willpower fades and you fall back on the bad habits that you had built in the past. And it's sort of this like roller coaster. Like you have discipline for a while and then you fall off. And you have discipline for a while and then you fall off. And so what this sort of helps do is almost hack into discipline. So you're cutting out these dopamine boosters Another thing you can do that I haven't gone this far yet, but I know it'll help is you can actually set up your environment for success. So if I wanted to stop binge watching TV, technically I could get rid of my TV. You know, if I wanted to stop eating sugar, I'll get rid of all the sugary drinks and all the sugary foods in my house. If I wanted to stop drinking coffee, I'd toss my Keurig in the trash. I'd throw my uh, French press away. I would throw my coffee bean grinder out the window. I'm not gonna go that far yet because I imagine I'll come back to coffee at some point, but I am detoxing from it right now. And I'll probably treat coffee as a cyclical thing where I'll drink it periodically and then I'll detox from it. And then I'll drink it periodically and then I'll detox from it. So that's how I'm imagining coffee going because I don't see it affecting my ability to be productive. I know uh, Alex Becker put out a video on why he hates caffeine and how it's over time, caffeine can damage your productivity. But um, I don't know, I'm still debating that one. We'll see. Those were just my check-in thoughts. This is almost like a really cool way to hack into becoming more disciplined. Hopefully not falling back off on that kind of roller coaster up down thing. So anyways, I'm gonna go for a run now. I, as you can see, I got into my running gear. I'm not in my shoes yet. I'm about to uh, put my running shoes on and talk to you later. All right, check in, bye. Whew. What's going on guys? All right, so I just finished up my run. I did a 5K and keep in mind that in February, so two months ago, I did a half marathon and I finished at just around two hours. I think that's like almost a nine minute mile pace for a half marathon. Man, I've been so out of shape, which is one of the reasons I'm doing this dopamine detox challenge is because I've been very out of shape. I did my 5K the same exact pace that I did my half marathon. That's how uh, out of shape I am right now. I wanted to take this time to talk a little bit about uh, why I'm even doing it. So when the COVID happened and coronavirus happened, it got pretty hard for me and my business. For what I do kind of like locally, I'm a, I'm a local men's stylist. I have clients here in Austin, Texas locally. I take them shopping, help them uh, convey the message and build the wardrobe they want to build. And then I also have my online social media, Instagram, and the YouTube channel that I'm building. And when COVID happened, literally like all of my sponsors dropped out. All of my uh, clients had to cancel, obviously, because all the stores were closing. I could no longer take them shopping. Everybody was getting in a huge cash crunch. And I did as well. It's really affected my business. I had to end up applying for a um, pandemic disaster unemployment employment for self-employed and for like freelancers and things like that. I pretty much just like turned to my vices for comfort. I turned to wine, I turned to coffee, video games. I gave up doing all the things that I was doing to make my business successful, like marketing and putting talks together and filming all the time and going out and uh, documenting just all the things that I use for like advertising my business and growing my business. And I got super lazy. I started to get out of shape and it was just 
I was just going downhill fast because if there's anything that I've learned is that there's no such thing as stagnation. You're either improving or you're either regressing. You're either progressing or regressing. There's, it's only inertia. That's all it is. You're either going to improve and then it'll exponentially improve or you're going to regress and then it'll exponentially regress. That's all. It's just inertia. So I found myself trying to convince myself that, oh, I'm just staying stagnant. But in fact, I was regressing. I was regressing hard. I was like, you know what? I got to make a change. And that's when I discovered the whole dopamine detox thing. I was like, oh my gosh, this is exactly what I need. So having said all that, that's kind of the why behind the reason I'm doing this dopamine detox and taking you guys on this journey with me because I want to reclaim my life. I want to reclaim the progress that I was making. I just want to get better and I want you guys to get better. Like that's the whole reason I started the channel in the first place. And if I can't practice what I preach, what am I doing? So that's the point of this whole entire dopamine detox to get back on track hopefully inspire you guys to get back on track. And keep in mind, like the things that are dopamine triggers for me might be completely different for you. You might have some of the same vices I do, or you might have your own vices. Everyone's different. If you're interested in doing something like this, try to figure out what are the things that are causing your dopamine uh, triggers to fire. You probably know what they are. You know, it's the things that you feel really good doing it. You get an instant gratification right when you do it, and it causes you to procrastinate. That's where I would start looking. But anyways, guys, I'll check in later. All right. Good morning, guys. All right, coming at you with a day two update. So yesterday I just finished day one of my dopamine detox and wanted to give you an update on how that day went. Man, I wish I could say that day one, I cut out everything and man, I just dove into work and like annihilated everything and was super productive, but it was not like that. Here's some positives that came out of it was, I did um, finish that 5K that I wanted to run. I did do a lot of like chores around the house that I've been neglecting. But after that, man, like I pretty much just kind of crashed. My head hurt. I couldn't think too straight. My brain was kind of foggy. And I think it was like the caffeine withdrawal. I honestly, what I think what I was going through. At one point, like I think I, I just sat down and fell asleep for like, 30 minutes and I never take naps during the day, which was just crazy. It was not fun. It was kind of tough actually. I found myself thinking a lot about the stuff that I would normally be doing and that was just kind of getting in the way of me actually accomplishing things. Putting my phone away and not getting on wasn't as hard as I thought it would be, like getting on social media and stuff like that. There's at one point I went, I sat down at my desktop to check like emails and try to make a rule to get on and check email just like twice a day. And at one point when I was checking the email, I just randomly opened a new tab and clicked on the Facebook tab. Like it was so crazy how autopilot it was. And then I caught myself like, whoa, like what are you doing? And then I just like quickly X'd out of it. Not pouring myself a glass of wine at night that I had normally been doing to wind down wasn't that hard. Like saying no to that was easier than I thought it was gonna be. The hardest part for me through the whole thing has honestly been like the caffeine thing. And like, it's just such a part of my morning, like a daily ritual. Like I get up, you know, I get dressed, wash my face and get ready for the day. And then I go have my morning cup of coffee. Like I just look forward to it so much. And even thinking about it right now, honestly, is like could be a dopamine trigger because it's such like a ritual part of my day. And I imagine it's that way for a lot of people. So that's been kind of the most difficult part. And I think I crashed a little bit yesterday from that withdrawal, but I'm hoping today's a little bit easier. Usually on these detoxes by like day three, Three and four, you start to really see the changes and the productivity. And I'm on day two. I'm hoping that I can still push myself to be a little productive, have those hacks kick in sooner than later. So the plan for today, keep everything away. Like put my phone away, keep it locked up in like a drawer. I'm only going to get on to Instagram if I have to post for my job. YouTube, if I have to respond to comments or upload a video. I'm gonna spend a lot of the day trying to film grooming and style content, which is what I normally make on this channel. I don't make dopamine detox videos. This is just something fun that I wanted to try. It's a little bit different, but uh, that's the plan today is to try to just be as productive as possible. So. I'll check in with you guys a little bit later. All right, bye. <laughs> oh man, day three. Man, I gotta tell you guys, I didn't really check in yesterday that much with day two, cause I was just kind of in the zone and doing a lot of work. Like I filmed two videos, I researched another one, got a lot of work done around the house. Oh, and another thing, like I've been going to bed like way earlier. Like this morning, like it's like 6.45 AM right now when I'm filming this. I just woke up with no alarm clock. I woke up naturally and I woke up with energy and I woke up excited 
Like I'm about to go for a run right now. That's why I'm in like my workout gear. Another thing that, you know, like I haven't been craving coffee today. Yesterday I sort of craved it a little bit. I haven't really been craving it at all today. And I just woke up and it's normally a time where I crave it most. Is that gonna last? I don't know. Am I gonna say I'm never gonna drink coffee ever again? I'm not gonna say that because I don't know if I'll be able to do that. I don't know if that's true or not. What I've come to realize over these last three days so far, I think the whole point of this is not to say that it's bad to do anything that gives you dopamine. Like the biggest kind of insight that I've got from all of this is like, don't let it control you. Like you don't rely on those things to make it through your day. All right, I'm gonna shut up now. I'm gonna go run. All right, bye. Okay guys, run completed. It's done. Can't even hold the camera up straight, but <clears throat> felt good. I just wanted to check in just for accountability purposes, not to show you that I did the run, but to show myself that I can do it, you know? And even if I never post this video, the camera is holding me accountable. I think it's a cool lesson somewhere in there is trying to do it all on your own is definitely possible, but having accountability partners just makes it so much easier, makes it so much better. You guys succeed together. How cool is that? You guys uh, inspire each other. One of you is feeling down. Maybe one of you is like, hey man, I just feel like playing video games for a while. I don't even want to do any work. Your accountability partner can say, hey, you know that path. You go down that path, you know where it leads you. Come on, man. So it's just cool. Just wanted to check in for kind of no other reason than accountability, but talk to you guys later. One thing that I've really started to notice, sort of come to a conclusion to in, in the short time I've been doing this, only day three, all of the things that you use to sort of escape reality, escape life temporarily to get that, you know, instant dopamine rush, that instant gratification. Like the dopamine detox is is great for you know getting rid of that stuff taking it out so if we look at that those things as like sort of time wasters they feel good and they're fun and in the moment it feels really good but you know in the back of your mind you're not being productive you're not getting stuff done you're not doing what you need to do to achieve your goals if you don't have habits to replace that once you remove those then you're kind of just sitting around still you know it's it's not easy to instantly just replace those habits like those things are hard to do at first if you can just like kind of push through and force yourself to do it all of a sudden you're starting to replace all these things you use to escape reality with things that your brain starts to enjoy doing hard things because if you're not giving it dopamine from other things your brain still needs dopamine it still needs motivation and it doesn't care where it gets it from it's like if you hate vegetables because you've been eating brownies and cookies and doritos and cheetos and cinnamon and toast crunch or whatever you're eating don't get me wrong i love those things vegetables sound disgusting after you've been eating that but if you fast for 24 hours like dude that carrot it sounds so good or that asparagus or those brussels sprouts lean chicken like it starts to sound delicious because your brain needs dopamine from somewhere and if you deprive it of all the things that are bad for you the non-nutritious things you start feeding it nutritious things it's going to think that that's what it needs and it's going to start to produce dopamine it's like it's weird it's, you're just tricking yourself into being productive and getting stuff done. If you don't have positive, nutritious, quote unquote, habits to replace with the instant gratification stuff that you've cut out, it's not gonna work. You, you gotta replace it with something so you start forming those new habits. Anyways, I'll check in with you guys later. Okay, so I just realized I didn't even check in on day four at all. It's day five already. <laughs> Why did that happen? Well, yesterday I was literally like kind of in the zone on a lot of things. I was just focused. I was researching videos, writing out talking points, filming videos. I think I did two workouts yesterday. I did a cardio session and then just some like body weight stuff, body weight, kettlebell, just dumbbell stuff that I have lying around the house. So how am I feeling? I haven't craved any of the things. So day five now, is it five? Yeah, tomorrow six, Wednesday seven. Day one and two, I was craving caffeine, like really hardcore. I was like, man, how am I gonna finish this without my coffee? Saying no to like drinking a glass of wine at night, the alcohol in general wasn't too hard. Yeah, I was like, you know, it would be nice to do all this work during the day and relax at night with a glass of wine and watch a TV show. But to be honest with you, I haven't missed it that much. I thought I would miss it more. TV, it's, I like watching cool TV shows, but to be honest, like I get more joy now from sitting down and like journaling and recapping my day and like saying like, what did I get done? How much? So here, here's a really useful insight is that if you can take the work that you're doing, that the new habits, the new productive habits you're doing and, and put metrics to them, like numbers and say like, okay, I did four hours of work today. I got X number of 
things done and figuring out what those metrics are. So like the metrics for me are how much of the right work, like work that moves the needle, not just busy work, how much of the right creative focused work that will actually grow the business did I get done? And did I journal it? Like that's another metric that is to actually track the progress. Did I track it? Writing down if you didn't do it, what stopped you? And then kind of planning the next day at night during the journaling, like planning out, okay, what do I want to get done tomorrow? And when you can look at those goals and like put a metric to it, a KPI, it's almost like that's more exciting to look at at night than sitting down with a glass of wine and watching a television show or sitting down with a beer and playing video games. I still love those things, don't get me wrong. Like, I'm not saying I'm never gonna do any of this stuff ever again. I think it's fine to indulge every once in a while. But the problem that I was running into is it was running my life. It was literally like I wasn't getting anything done. I was letting it control my life. I was letting it get in the way of the priorities. After this all is done, after day seven, once I like do a day's a hard day's work and I get a lot done and I track it, if I wanna sit down, watch a TV show with my wife, have a glass of wine, I'm gonna do it. I'm not saying I'm never gonna do these things again. I just wanted, I don't want it to get to a point where it's running my life again. That's the problem is when you start to rely on these escapisms, on these things that you're escaping reality from daily to get through the day. That's when it becomes a problem and that's, the path that I was going down. And that's why I decided to do this. Having said all that, I feel great today. Day five, I, I craved caffeine day one, two, and a little bit on day three. Didn't crave it at all yesterday. I haven't craved it. I woke up this morning, literally started getting to work on stuff. I just had energy. Um, my sleep is better. The only thing I will say is that caffeine kind of messed up my digestion for a little while. Now that I quit cold turkey after drinking caffeine for a long time, I've had all these like random digestion stuff, like just random bowel movements that aren't on my regular schedule. That'll reset itself over time. Anyways, I'm gonna check out and I'll keep you guys updated on how I'm feeling. All right, bye. Yo, yo, yo. All right, this is the end of day five. I have to confess something. I was on social media today, a little longer than I should have been for this reason. We announced that my wife is pregnant and we're expecting our first kid. So that was just super exciting. I had to get on and we posted, you know, our uh, pregnancy announcement photos. And so, uh, you know, everyone was commenting and congratulations, congratulations, oh my gosh, this is so awesome. So I was just on social media more than I've been this whole detox just because of that. I wasn't relapsing, you know, quote unquote, or breaking the detox, but in any case, we're pregnant. <laughs> my wife's pregnant. I'm not, that'd be weird. We are having a kid and I'm gonna be a dad. Holy crap. Yep, I'm gonna be a dad. But I'm very, very excited. Man, <laughs> I don't even know what to say right now. I'm just very, uh, I mean, I obviously I've known for three months now that my wife is pregnant, but this is the first time we're making it public and putting it online. Whew. But yeah, anyways, I just wanted to give that check in real quick at the end of day five that I was on social media for that reason. Man, there's a loud plane. Can y'all hear that plane? That thing is loud. Really quick rundown. Caffeine, I honestly started craving it again today, but then it went away. I've been kind of like cyclical with it. It's like a roller coaster on that. Like it's up and down and up and down. Alcohol, have not, don't care. TV, I've, I've been wanting to sort of just like wind down and watch TV, but now instead I'm gonna go wind down and read a book. You know, this is really cool. The, it's just the overstimulation of dopamine from all of these things that just saturate your brain with so much dopamine. Once you start detoxing from them, you really start finding dopamine from things that you would have never gotten excited about before, like working, <laughs> like what? like working out. I know after exercise releases, you know, uh, endorphins and makes you happy, but during is painful and it's like hard. But it's funny because like you can find dopamine from that once you detox from all the other things that get that overstimulate and oversaturate your brain with dopamine once you start letting go of all that. And like researching and writing outlines for videos, like that's fun again. Like I'm enjoying that again. And I'm starting to put out more content again. Reading, like I, I dude, like this last year, I, I probably read like three books. And in 2018, I read like 30. And then from halfway through 2019 till 2020, it's just been a mess. It's just been a mess. You know, but this has been helping quite a bit. Anyways, I'm rambling now, so I'll check in with you guys tomorrow. All right, bye. Oh man, guys, the final day, day seven. 
I made it to the final day. I think I wanna use this last segment to kind of explain my plan going forward, what I'm gonna do after this is all done. After this is done, I'm gonna see how far, how long I can go without the caffeine. Cause that was the biggest, I guess, pain point for me during this whole time. And I don't wanna have to get to a point where I'm relying on coffee every day again. So I'm gonna see how long I can go without the caffeine. I might switch to something like tea or I found this other company called Mud Water that is like a bunch of um, ashwagandha mushrooms, cordyceps mushrooms, like basically this mushroom drink that has black tea leaves in it, but it only has 14 milligrams of caffeine versus a cup of coffee, which has 150 per cup maybe. I might switch to something like that, like a coffee alternative, or I'll just not do it, go with water, you know? Like we'll just see, but that's gonna be my biggest probably goal is to keep laying off the caffeine. You know, alcohol, I've decided, you know, one or two drinks a week is not a bad thing. It's when I rely on it and I need it nightly to wind down, that's when it becomes a problem. You know, when this whole quarantine is over, having a social beverage, cool. I'm not too worried about the alcohol thing. It was just, I started drinking wine every night just to wind down. And I was like, you know what? That's probably not healthy for me. It's not good. I'm gonna cut back on that. And then as far as the daily habits go, I think I'm still gonna limit my social media time a whole lot because it is a time waster. And since I have replaced these new habits, so let me give you an idea of how I'm gonna keep these positive habits going. I've implemented a morning and a evening sort of journaling system. In the morning, I do, um, it's a meditation and a future self visualization. So basically just clear my head for the day and then write down the direction that, I'm, that I want my life to go. It's not like a to-do list. It's not like an action items. It's just saying, who do I wanna be in a month, in a year, in five years, in 10 years? And that's really it. It's not really goal setting either. It's just like, where do I see myself? And then at night is when I do the, the nitty gritty journaling. I, I say like, okay, what did I do today? And I have those metrics, which by the way, the metrics is how much focus, creative work my business did I do? How many hours? Did I do my morning meditation, future self visualization? That's another metric. Did I do the actual journaling session? That's actually a metric. And then the last one is, am I taking the, my freshest time of the day, which is usually the mornings when I'm most creative? Am I using that time to put my best energy into work? Or am I using it to slack off? I want to use it to, to put my best mental energy into work. So that's part of my journaling session. What did I do today? And I go through those metrics. The next journaling session is sort of like a conversation with myself about how I'm feeling about all of my to do things. So it's like what, what I'm going to do almost like a reflection, like where am I going? So the first one is like, this is where I've, this is what I've done. The second one is this is what I'm doing and how I feel. And then the third part of the journaling session is sort of where I'm headed. And that's when I lay out my to-do list, my action items for the next day. So I do my to-do list at night. I think it's just better than waking up and trying to put together a to-do list. When you do it at night, you can wake up and already know what you need to get done. And one thing I found is that when I make a to-do list that's like seven tasks long, I tend to only get one or two done the next day. So what I've started doing is making a to-do list at night. That's like my number one and number two priority. That's it. There's only two things on my to-do list for my business. And they're things that if I do, will move the needle. And if I do enough of them over time, it will build my business. I'm only putting one or two priorities on my to-do list to get done in a day, rather than like seven things that I think I'm gonna be able to do when most things are gonna take longer than you expect. That's just the way it goes. That's how I do my journaling. So having that system in place is really powerful to make sure that I'm continuing these positive habits and moving forward that I limit those escapisms. Maybe not detox completely. The seven day detox, I think was enough to kind of reset what I need to be doing. It was it was awesome, by the way, guys. Like. If there's any takeaway from all this, that definitely do a dopamine detox. It was 100% worth it. And I, I highly recommend it for anyone who's feeling like they are not being productive and they're just doing things that are causing floods of dopamine to come into their brain without actually being productive. And if you wanna look at the science on that, you know, like there's two channels I'd recommend to go watch. I'm not gonna go into the science on this channel. This is more of my personal journey. If you wanna watch the science behind the dopamine detox and why it's powerful and why a lot of those things you use to escape reality, are so damaging and over flooding your brain with dopamine, go check out Alex Becker has a pretty good channel on that. He's like a super minimalist and very successful business guy who does dopamine detoxes. He, he claims that it pretty much saved his life and his business. And then uh, Andrew Kirby, who's like a self-development channel. Go check out those two channels. You can see videos on the science behind dopamine detoxes. But man, I'm excited about this. It was awesome. That was my seven day dopamine detox and I'll see you guys on YouTube. Peace.